It's time for Pro Am Prediction. Hello and welcome back to Pro Am Predictions. I am, of course, Paul Oddy on the amateur side. And this week, the show is after being hijacked a little bit by uh, a, a fellow bantamweight of Brian Moore's in the Bellator division. We have Franz Malambo. How are you doing, Franz? How's it going, man? You good? Not too bad, no, at all. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I, I, I was going to crack a joke about... Uh, you you coming on and hijacking the show because you you got bumped off the rankings and Brian got put up, but you you, you were telling me you were happy to see Brian's name up there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like like I said, like I thought Brian's name should have already been there. You yeah. know what I mean? He's been smashing it, so uh, it's it's about time Brian got there. Exactly, and and of course, look, you you have every opportunity to get up there yourself. When uh when do you see yourself fighting again next, or are you waiting on something from Bellator? I don't know. Like I'm waiting to get in there as uh, as soon as possible. But yeah. uh, you know, what I mean, I still have to have talks uh, to determine what what what's what's happening next. So of course, yeah. much on that, like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I'm not even sure what's going on to be honest. Yeah, it's it's strange times, especially for all the European fighters. I know, like, there's a lot of guys that have been just waiting on that call to get a fight, and and, and with everything. visa issues and everything, man, it's real tough. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, and like then fights getting cancelled and all. Like my little brother Kenny, yeah, yeah. supposed to be fight. Like you know, what I mean, loads of boys from the club was meant to be fighting. Um, and the cage legacy crazy. card, yeah. Two I, days away from the thing, like two yeah. days away. I actually did an interview with Kenny before the fight, about two weeks before yeah, the fight, yeah. and he was saying that he was training with you, and it was the first time he did a proper kind of camp together for yeah, this yeah, one, yeah, and he yeah. was excited to get in and show what he's picked up. Yeah, he's ready to go, man. We were all ready to go, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. But look, hopefully this thing passes soon, and we kind of get back to normal. I did want to touch on one of the fights from last week on the Bellator card. You had Caspel versus Jarnell Lugo, and before the yeah. fight, they were guys that were ranked one above you and one below you. So I imagine that's one that you were keeping a close eye on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, actually. Uh, yeah, I was I was watching it and uh, I was very impressed there uh, with Lugo. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. He fought a serious fight. Yeah, and uh, yeah, 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 very technical, liked his moves and uh, Belt, you know, put up a good fight, but like uh, Lugo dominated the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's one of those where you don't expect to see that that high level from a guy that's so that's relatively inexperienced. I know he's had a lot of experience in the Bellator cage itself, but I mean he's still only he's just moved to six and oh no, it's six fights, so it's impressive to see a guy put on a show like that with such little exactly. fight time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good to see me fight always. Is that one you'll be looking at getting to get yourself back up into those rankings? Someone like a Jarnell Lugo. I'm looking on all of them. To be <laughs> you know what I mean, I don't care who I get next. I just want a fight. Like, yeah, yeah, of soon course. As possible. I've been training. I'm ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and it, it it's a bit of a funny one for y- yourself and the the boys there at SBG because inside that top ten, now arguably there's three of you, and it's it. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you're all chasing the same goal with the belt and. Uh, look, it'll play out the way it plays out and whoever gets the shot first, but there's still some fantastic fights in that top 10 for everyone, f- for the foreseeable anyway. Oh, of course, yeah, there's loads of guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. loads of guys. I mean, I, I like I like the way, like, that, that's bad that there's three of us, like, yeah. uh, in there, like, because obviously I, I always knew but uh, that we're in the rankings now is deadly as well, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, you can kind of see how close you are to each other as well. There's yeah, the, the, that yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is yeah. is there a little yeah. bit of competitiveness going on? Or <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like that. I like that fact. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it's it just it's just the race kind of to the top then. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know what I mean? We're uh, it's not going to change anything like between us. It's still the same. It's just. Of course, you, you've been together 10 years. That's not going to change that dynamic. Um, exactly, brothers, man. Yeah, I, I, I did want to touch on the, that fight in itself and the two guys. Now, I, I prefaced this on our podcast last week that I thought the guys were kind of a victim of circumstance and because of the way the, the, the criteria for the rankings that Caspel and Jarnell Lugo were found themselves in that top 10 because of that and that there was guys... 
outside of the rankings, like Brian Moore when it was initially came out, like uh, Eric Perez or Guido exactly, Perez. Exactly, that didn't make any sense. Yeah, so do, do you think those guys will find it difficult now that they find themselves so high up the rankings and that they're going to be taking on the best in the world in such a tough division? Well, like the rankings is just a new thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it literally just happened. Like, so it'll, it'll just play out the way it'll play yeah, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? whoever is supposed to be in the rankings will soon show that they're meant to be in the rankings and it'll just even itself out. Yeah, of you know course. I mean? so, yeah. yeah. Um, of course, this week we have the continuation of the Light Heavyweight Grand Prix as well. And we had our first match last week, Ryan Bader versus Leota Machida. What did you make of that mm-hmm. fight? It was daily, man. But you know what? <laughs> My heart was broken for Machida. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd have to say. It was a tough but, uh, watch. Yeah. It was it was a tough watch, but uh, like I, I was I was very impressed with Bader, like you know what I mean. Uh, seeing how he went out the first time, yeah, uh, he went against Machida, and to come back and then just proper dominate like that, yeah, yeah. Is, is is impressive, you know. Yeah, the first eight minutes of that fight, I was watching, it and I was kind of getting the the heebie-jeebies for Bader because he didn't want to engage at all. It seemed like he didn't even yeah. want to shoot for a takedown, but once he found his feet and got comfortable, it was just it was a complete one sided affair. That's it, because Machida is so awkward, so you would have to take your time and just yeah. like readjust and see how you're gonna, you know, what I mean, how, how you're gonna approach this awkward game. Like, yeah. While he's strong bombs at you as well. Of course. So I suppose that we will move on to this week's fights and we'll give some predictions and we will start out. And um, there's a couple of interesting fights with regards to SBG and the connection there. On the Bellator card this week, you have Saul Rogers is fighting Mads Burnell. Saul Rogers, is, of course, is a SPG Manchester. Um, he's coming off a win over RB Mezhdov, and that's since the loss to Voichel. And he's taking on Mads Burnells, who's on a five-fight win streak. He's 14-3 and three overall, and he's just after winning his debut against Darko Banovic in, in Bellator. Um, these, yeah. are, these are two guys that... Both guys are submission specialists. Saul Rogers has 11 submissions in 14 wins. Burnells has eight submissions in 14 wins. They're very closely matched up in that regard. How do you see this fight going? I already had uh, Saul pick for that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, hard, yeah. it's hard to go against your training partner, but when, when, it's, Saul, <laughs> when it's Saul Rogers, it's harder to go against him. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. Like, I've... Uh, I've seen him fight so many times, like you know what I mean, and I've seen him kind of develop just in the background, like you know what I mean. And he's uh, he's gotten he's very good, like yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. And uh, I feel like this guy doesn't have doesn't have what it takes. Yeah, like you know what I mean. So it, it's not just because he's a training partner; it's just seeing like um, what's on the table. And yeah, of course. So I just has it. And it, it's mad, like, you look at the similarities of these two guys' careers. So Saul obviously had that spell on tough. He had the four four wins in, in the tough house. We know what happened with the finale and all that, and he was supposed to be fighting Artem, but that never came to be, unfortunately. But then you have Mads Burnell also had a brief spell. He went one and two in the UFC proper. Um, it, it, it Like, f- for a matchmaking perspective, this fight obviously made, no, made perfect sense. Both guys 14 and three. Both guys relatively new to Bellator. What surprises me is how low down the card it is. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it is. It's a big fight, isn't it? Like it's a big, big fight, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that that stuff happens all the time. Like I don't know how that's controlled or not. But yeah, it happens like that. That kind of stuff. Then again, me then, once or twice. yeah. <laughs> then again, there's some <laughs> phenomenal fights on that card. So look, it, it would have been hard to bump one for the other. That's the thing as well. Yeah, yeah. There's so many good fights. Like, so, you know. Yeah. For sure. So you, you're you're picking Saul Rogers. Um, I, I'm a, I'm with you on that one. I think Saul Rogers takes it. And I think here, mm-hmm. like obviously they both are grappling experts, but I think Saul just has a little bit too much from when it comes to the wrestling department. I think in the yeah. jujitsu game, they'll they'll match each other quite well. So I do see it going to a decision. But I, I think Rogers wrestling is that little bit slicker, and he, he puts them together a little bit better. I'm getting good I'm getting good at this crack I not, might not be able to fight myself but I'm able to break down fights <laughs> yeah 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 sure look it's uh, uh, you're, you're better at breaking down fights than I would be yeah. you know what I mean 
Uh, next up, we are going to chat about another SBG faithful and one of your training partners in SBG headquarters in Dublin, Mr. Pedro That's Carvalho. Right. Carvalho! <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see his fight, man. He's going to smash things, man. Yeah. Like, here, you should see the stuff he's doing in the gym, man. He's... Yeah, man, yeah. I, I'm telling you, just watch and see this fight, yeah? That's all I got to say. Very good. Um, he's he's obviously look. He is coming off that loss to Pitbull, but I feel like he's going to come back yeah, yeah, hungrier, yeah. and he's going in against a kid that's taking this on short notice. Now, the one thing about Jay Wilson, Jay Wilson is seven and zero. He's unbeaten. He's looked impressive in the four 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 victories he's had most recently. Not go to Sergio de Barra, the win over Taiwan Claxton, and then two submissions before that. The only thing I would say is he's never fought a guy anywhere close to Pedro's caliber, and Pedro's right. been in there with like legit killers for the last what five six fights um and he's finishing guys as yeah, well yeah, 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 so yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah legends as well man he's yeah, yeah. Smashing it. Do you know what i mean yeah so for me i i think pedro picks up a ko victory in this one i think i think jj finds it tough on the feet he's obviously a bit of a wizard on the mat and we know pedro yeah, likes yeah. a guillotine and he likes a submission <laughs> himself but i just think yeah, pedro no. pedro will be able to control this on the feet and keep it standing yeah yeah, he's so So, yeah, 100% agree. Excuse me. No problem. Uh, we will move on to the main card, and we've got a couple of fights to talk about on the main card. We do have Paul Daly is back, Mr. Semtex. He's taking on Saba Hamasi. Paul Daly, 41, 17, and 2. He's going into his 61st fight in MMA, which is just... It's phenomenal yeah, to be around a block, man. Yeah, <laughs> he's been here for a long time. And and weirdly, yeah. I feel like he's been in Bellator forever, but this is actually only his twelfth bow in Bellator. He is on a well, two-fight yeah. win streak: wins over Sadawad and Eric Silva. Mm. He has that loss before that to Venom Page and to Fitch. The Venom Page yeah. one, of course, I think he wants to forget about. Um, he might be looking to get that one back. But you have Saba Hamasi, who's a bit of a tricky one. He he's on a four-fight win streak: wins over Bobby Volker, Curtis Milner. Milner, uh, Mika Terrell. Um, he, he's one of those guys that he has 10 KO wins and 15 wins, but he's five KO losses mm. in eight losses. He, he's a stand wow. and bang, and wow. yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. goes out there and it's 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 die, uh, die killer be killed kind of attitude, right? So, I, yeah, I, like. I, I think Sabah Hamasi takes this one by KO. I think Paul Daly has a lot of miles on the clock. I don't think he's the same Paul Daly we know. Um, I hope I'm proven wrong because I'm a fan of Paul Daly, but I think Sabah Hamasi is the kind of up and coming in that division. So I do see him getting a KO on that one. That's the thing with Paul Daly, though. You know what I'm saying? Like he, yeah, it yeah. only takes one. Like, but still, you know what I mean? He's been around for ages. You know what I mean? Mileage on him or whatever, but he, I, I think he still packs a punch, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, does. like, yeah, like um, I, I didn't really know much about uh, his opponent there, like, and you're you're saying that and all that, but like, as you were ex as you were explaining, like his type of style, that goes real good against Paul Daly's kind of you, style. You think you it suits he, Paul he that there. someone's gonna come in and I stand and bang with him? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, because that's what he does, isn't it? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, but you so, have to you have to think after all these years and sixty fights in 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 MMA. Yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, that that style of being in a war, uh, does your chin can hold up forever? Oh, no, of course, of course, of course. But at the same time, it, it is still Paul Daly. Like, you know that's what I mean? That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. All that, all that is, yeah, that's what I mean. All that is true. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 100%. Like, he's been around for so long. Like, obviously, he, he's not as he was flipping like a few hundred, a few years ago. But still, yeah. it's, I, I think he's still dangerous, man. Yeah, you know for sure. And look, just Paul Daly's been in there with everyone. That the, the guy's been in there That's with Lorenz Lark and uh, Douglas Lima, Rory McDonald, Jorge Masvidal back in the day has a win over yeah. Jorge. Yeah, he's been Making in there with everything. everyone. I, 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 I certainly think his fight IQ is higher and that he's a, a cleverer striker. I just think mm. Saba is the perfect guy to drag him into a storm. Right, and if it goes into right, a storm, right, right. it's it's a flip of a coin, really. But I just think That's Saba having saying, youth on his yeah. side. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Could happen. And then we move on to the uh, Light Heavyweight Grand Prix, the continuation of it, and I'm so excited for this one. Um, mm. We have Bader's next opponent will come out of the Corey Anderson versus Devlechan Yagshimorodov fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 
this Yag Shamordov character, do you know anything about him? Not much <laughs> at all. You're, you're not. You're not the only one, by the way. <laughs> no way, yeah. The, not the, at all, mate. There's been eyebrows raised all over the MMA world for the last since this really? thing has been announced. Who the hell is Yag Shamordov? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. It's it's bananas yeah. how he's been put do into this. You don't this. know who he is. I I I had to look him up. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And. Uh, in the Grand Prix and that he must like he think they're in the Grand Prix for no reason man. but it, he's, it, it'll be his Bellator debut so oh, I, I, I'm just going to list off here right so he's on an 8 fight win streak right and oh, right. if if that you can't explain it no it does to a certain extent but if you go through it right so his last few opponents his last opponent his last three opponents were decent 16 and 4 18 and 9 and 9 and 1 right. but then you start yeah. going back and there's some sketchy records there you have oh, yeah. five and two, an eight, fifteen and one, a twenty and twenty-two, a five, five and one. Nine out of his first ten wins, their record adds up to twenty-one and twenty-six. There's a lot of guys on there that mm. they, he his record is clearly padded to a certain extent, but he does yeah. have some good wins, and he obviously yeah, yeah. has KO power. Um, it's an interesting but then one. Again, I, but yeah. then again, you look at them. Do you, do you know every single individual of them people you, you named? No. And and they could yeah. be going out and fighting killers every other week. That's what I'm saying. Look at my record. Garbage. But I'm no slouch. You know what I mean? Well, I wouldn't say your record but, uh, is garbage, but it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's certainly it's not, not becoming best. of you either, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? So, so you never know sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's true, yeah, and yeah. and he's coming over from the 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 eastern side. From he's coming from Moldova, um. So look, exactly. It, it, yeah, it's, he's he's probably yeah, fighting fucking like, killers over there. The Bellator matchmakers definitely didn't just grab some slaves yeah. out of nowhere and like you know I mean fling him into a fight like that. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, must have done their research. I'm sure they have some good light heavyweights in there that they easily could have given this nod to. They signed this guy for a reason, and they're putting him in there that's right it. off the bat for a reason. So yeah. that's another reason. That's another reason. So I, I think that makes it even more exciting. You know what I mean? To see but who is this guy just coming out of nowhere? It no it, it certainly adds a little bit of mystique to it for sure. Mm. But you know, the flip yeah, side yeah. of that is he's going in against Corey Anderson. Corey Anderson, look, Ooh. just signed to the UFC. Hey. We've seen what this guy's capable of. So he obviously we won his debut. Him. Against Melvin Manov, and look, we all know Melvin Manov has probably passed his pe- best days. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he went out of the UFC on a loss to Jan Blahovic, and we've seen what he's gone on mm. to do. And that was a decision last to Jan. Yeah. So, and yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he had a four fight win streak before that. He obviously had the victory over your your he training partner, dead. Johnny Walker. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, look, I mean, the guy is as legit as they come. Mm hmm. I, 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 I'd struggle not to pick Corey Anderson, but just to be a contrarian, I am going to pick Yagsha Mordoff by KO. Um, right. pure, purely no, because... About him. Purely because <laughs> there's some fucking reason this guy's in there. <laughs> <It's a mystery. laughs> just purely because of the mystery, he's getting the pick. I mean, is, d- is d- there's, there's too much going on there. There's something a bit sus yeah. about it. I'm, I'm picking yeah, this yeah, huge yeah. Moldovan dude who's going to come over and murder the whole light heavyweight division. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see, but for now, Corey Anderson gets it. Corey Anderson for you. No problem yeah, yeah. at all. Um, of course, main event, we have champion Vadim Nenkov is taking on Phil Davis again. Um, mm-hmm. Vadim Nenkov has looked like an absolute fucking killer. A killer. Yeah. Seven fight win streak, wins over Bader, Rafael Carvalho, Phil Davis, of course. He has yeah, nine yeah. KOs in his, in his 12 wins, two submissions. Uh, Davis is actually the only guy to take him to a decision, strangely enough, which which would make him right. a little bit more confident. But there's a lot of people talking about Bader's retribution in this uh, Grand Prix, and that he's he's aiming to fight guys that he's lost to before. Obviously, he got the the win back over Machida, but not a lot of people are talking about Phil Davis and the opportunities opportunities he has. He suffered a loss to Nemkov. He has the opportunity to get that loss back. He's suffered a loss in his career to Anthony Rumble Johnson. He has the opportunity to get that one back. And the dude has suffered two losses to Ryan Bader. He has the opportunity to get those back as well. He's on a three-fight win streak, wins over Machida, Albrechtson and McGreary. And he's looking savage as well, man. He's looking phenomenal, yeah. He he, he looks like he's stepped it up a gear in in the last kind of 18 months. So it's certainly an interesting fight. 
How do you see Definitely. it going? That's that's what I mean. Again, like Phil Davis is the guy I know. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And he's been looking so like he's improved since like we've seen him like uh, back in the day. And so I'm I'm, I'm going with him. Going with Phil Davis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a big pick. I look. I I just think I think Nenkov is as good as Bellator are making him out to be. I think if Vadim Nenkov yeah. goes over to the UFC, I think he runs a mock over there right now with John Jones missing. I think there's very few guys that are going to stop Nenkov. No, I have my own oh, sorry, theories. For and a second, hey, hold on a minute. I think I might be confused in who you're talking about. Are you talking about the current champion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, me. I don't think Phil has too much of a chance. In this. <laughs> 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 well, here, I didn't it, scratch the name that. Didn't pick with me straight away. Scratch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Va- Vadim's trouble, a beast. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Here, he's flipping, taking everyone out. Yeah, you yeah. Know yeah. What I mean? So, yeah, yeah. Phil has a uh, has a hard day ahead. Yeah, for sure. Look, I, for me as well, I have Vadim Ninkov, and I think he does get the finish this time. I think he puts Davis away. I think he's one of those guys that gets better every time he's out. Obviously, he has that decision to Davis, but I don't think to say Davis is going to last the twenty five minutes with him. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, Nemkov just looks him. like an absolute freak at the moment and yeah. like i say i would love to see him go over and take on yan for that for that uh if, if they were doing a cross promotion he's one of the guys from What's bellator that i would be picking yeah 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 yeah, yeah. definitely i yeah. mean i mean if they were to do a cross promotion there there's three or four champions Is that a thing there. they're talking about like? nah they Is talk about it all the time they did they, 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 yeah, it would never so. happen but right, yeah. we can all fantasize about it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, for a second there, I was like, you you were sounding like it's something that's yeah. happening. Like, but I miss I, something somewhere. You know what I mean? I talk about it all the time. I'm in dreamland half the time, yeah. friends. <laughs> right, 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 right. Stay there. It's, it's grand sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but Va- Vadim is certainly one of those guys that I think he, he could get it yeah. done. And he, he's, yeah. look, everyone's got, he's the guy to beat in this tournament. I think obviously they take on the winner of Rumble and Yoel and that's such a huge fight. It, it's going to be interesting to see how those guys come out of that looking. Do you know what I mean? Because Rumble's been out of the sport for three and a half years, four years. Um, yeah. Yoel hasn't looked his best of late and he's moving up a weight class. But if one of them comes out of it looking impressive, it sets up a phenomenal semi-final against Nemkov if he does get through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, but like, like you're saying, like, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not the same the two of them, are they? Like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But it'd still be a daily fight. Like, they're oh. still very dangerous. So it's gonna be a huge fight, regardless. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's yeah. one that we should have had years ago. So it's good to see it happening, regardless of of exactly. how long they've been out or whatever. And um, we yeah, will touch yeah. on one of the UFC fights, if you don't mind. Obviously, the main event on Saturday night is Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gastelum fight that was supposed yeah. to happen two years ago you've Robert Whitaker uh, is since he's lost Adesanya has come back and he's beaten Cannoneer he's beaten Till and he looks like the Whitaker of old he looks absolutely phenomenal and he's going he in there against he does and he's going in there against a Gastelum who two years ago you would have said all right Gastelum might give him some troubles but this is a Gastelum who's one and three in his last four. He's taken some bad losses to Hermanson, Till, and Israel. Um, I just don't like this fight for Gastelum. I think Gastelum doesn't belong in the 185 pound division. I think he needs to cut down that weight and get down to 170 pounds. I think Whitaker puts on a showcase on on for, on Saturday night, and Izzy can't avoid him anymore. I think Robert Whitaker makes his claim to get another shot at that title on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised to see that fight, like, because it, it kind of seems clear, like, that yeah, yeah. Whitaker, like, is going to do damage, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's one you look at and you just know, like. Yeah, and, I, and you, you think know. about it, Whitaker as well, for a guy that, he dominated that division. And yes, mm-hmm. look, he got knocked out by Izzy and I- Izzy's a freak of nature. That's a different story altogether. <laughs> it, like, it is, but. Yeah. How does that guy have to fight three world class fighters to get back to a belt? It's it's just it's striking to me. It's a bit odd. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> it's crazy, look, because he is he's been dominant the whole time. Yeah. Until he just lost the easy, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, and, and he's not even get. What worries me is he's not even guaranteed it after this fight. 
it's yeah, it's which is crazy. Madness altogether. Crazy. I've actually, yeah. I've, I've maybe I've, like it just kind of like so like how how his fight was with Izzy. They're just trying to maybe delay it. Maybe yeah, get yeah. a few more flipping knockouts on his belt and then make it a bigger fight then. When I think it's worth the wait though at the same time. It is, but you don't want to see Whitaker oh, on a banana him, yeah. skin. Do you know what I mean? True, if yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whitaker slips time, up in one of them, he's down the division and he's scrapping back to right. get there again. Like, Yeah, yeah look. Because if he deserves the shot, he deserves the shot, I suppose. You know what 100%. I mean? He, sh- he should have yeah. had that shot a long time ago. Like, So, look, it, it is what it is, but I see, I, I think after Saturday night he gets it. And I have a bit of an odd prediction for this one. I think Whitaker actually gets a submission victory in this one. I think... He's, he's yet yeah. to have a submission victory in the UFC, but if we look previous to his UFC uh, career, he was a submission specialist. Like uh, 80% of his fights finished by submission before he got to the UFC, and he certainly knows how to grab a neck. And Kelvin Gastelum do, does have two sub losses on his career in the UFC to yeah. Hermanson and Weidman. I think he's susceptible to them. I think he shoots for the takedown, and I think Whitaker takes his neck. Do you reckon? Mm-hmm. I, I'm just calling I'm calling for a knockout man I think hands are going to be swung yeah, there yeah. and uh, Whitaker's going to get it Gaslam's got that thick skull though that man can take a beating like <laughs> yeah that's true as well but <laughs> like Whitaker can give it that's you know what I mean? the, very very true very that's very true no, we we do do a little uh, segment on the show every week where we give our bet of the week. I'm not pushing you to give a bet of the week because I know you're only on air uh, bailing us out this week in in Brian Moore's absence. But yeah. I am I am going to pick my uh, uh, bet of the week, and just to be controversial, I'm going to say Nemkov, Yagshimordov, and Whitaker in a treble. There's going to be phenomenal odds on it because Yagshimordov is there's a big question mark over him. But fuck it, I'll yeah. go for it, and we, we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> Don't know much about betting myself. So <laughs> <laughs> speaking another language, there, pal. <laughs> you, you you know fighting though. That's what matters. Suppose you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was an absolute pleasure having you on, friends, and I do appreciate you coming on. I know you you, you bailed us out on short notice. Brian Moore couldn't come on this, this week. And look, hey, hopefully in the future... Place, I have to say. <laughs> in the future, yeah. hopefully, if, if if we kind of have something else going on, we can get you on another podcast, another show as well. Yeah, yeah. 100%. The next time, I won't forget the champ's name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. it, it happens to the best of us, trust me. I hey, I hey, I I've hey. been here trying to make sure I have Yagsha Murdoff's first name. It took me about half an hour to get the pronunciation of that right. You know why you kicked that like you got that proper straight? Because <laughs> I, I was gonna repeat what you said. Like I was gonna repeat. I still can't really yeah, yeah. I have to hear it a few more times, but yeah. Yeah, it's not not the easiest one for sure. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it, it was a pleasure having you on. And if you're watching, please subscribe on the YouTube channel, give us a, a like on Facebook, a Twitter follow and on Instagram as well. And be sure and follow Franz Malambo on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Where can they find you on social media, Franz? Yeah, yeah, just everybody get on my Instagram. Yeah. What, what, what's Franz your Malambo. handle for them to find? Franz Malambo is the handle, yeah. Perfect stuff. Thank yeah. you very much, Franz. Pleasure. Thank you, sir.